It's cold, but it's going to spray all over you, man. Check it out. The dangers of stirring up uh, sexual activity uh, can include one or, one or more of 26 STDs, which many, are, many of them are incurable, pregnancy, single parenthood, making the reality of future relationships more difficult, 18 years of child support for some of you young men that might just get caught slipping one day, boom. 18 years. Low income, poverty, dropping out of high school, not pursuing college, getting left behind socially by all of your friends who don't have kids, and most of all, the separation that we feel between us and God when we willingly, consciously, and wholeheartedly sin against God and ourselves. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 14 through 20 in the Message Bible. It says something about this thing that, that a lot of people get caught up in, having sex before the right time. And this is what it says. And listen to this with your heart, not just your ears. Because today is a, it's a, it's a defining, today is like a mile marker in your life. It's a defining moment for you today. Some of y'all are being snatched right out of the path of destruction by saying, I'm making this commitment. Some of your friends, they're flirting with it. And boom, they're going to have HIV. And they ain't going to tell you. they are like, what happened to so-and-so? I don't ever see her no more. What happened to so-and-so? I never seen him no more. Dude might have a disease that's killing his body off. And he can't even be around y'all no more because, because of the pain, because of the sores, the, the stuff y'all saw. Some of y'all are being snatched right out of the path of destruction. So don't forget that. Amen? Amen. God honored the master's body by raising it from the grave. He'll treat yours with the same resurrection power. Until that time, remember that your bodies are created with the same dignity as the master's body. You wouldn't take the master's body off to a whorehouse, would you? I should hope not. There's more to sex than just skin on skin. Sex is as much a spiritual mystery as a physical act. As, as written in scripture, the two become one. Since we want to become spiritually one with the master, we, we must not pursue the kind of sex that avoids commitment and intimacy, leaving us more lonely than ever, the kind of sex that can never become one. There is a sense in which sexual, sexual sins are different from all others. In sexual sin, we violate the sacredness of our own bodies, these bodies that were made for God-given and God-modeled love, for becoming one with another. Or didn't you realize that your body is a sacred place, the place of the Holy Spirit. Don't you see that you can't live however you please, squandering what God pays such a high price for? The physical part of you is not some piece of property belonging to the spiritual part of you. God owns the whole works. So let people see God in and through your body. Amen. And your body too. It's not just about how much you go to church, how much you pray, how much you do all the spiritual things. God says let people see that you can honor him with this right here. With Amen. your body. That's, that's putting Christianity into action. Amen. It's easy to do this. Oh, I love God. I love you. I worship you, Lord. I worship you so much. But man, can you do it with your body? That's a challenge. But God's grace is available for you. Amen? Amen. Let's go ahead and get this wrapped up. The next part that this scripture focuses on, it's, it explicitly re refers to the daughters of Jerusalem. Daughters of Jerusalem. This scripture is telling our young ladies to not allow their sexual desires to be stirred up and awakened by a boyfriend. Yet the boy that you might end up dating, six months from now, or a year from now, two years from now, three years, five years from now, he may not be in this room right now. He don't know what we're talking about. He may not have no type of revelation about this. It's gonna, The responsibility is on you. You are the one being charged by God's word to not let your sexual desires get aroused and stirred up before it's time to do anything with it. So you're going to have to communicate. You're going to have to tell that young man, look, I don't know about you, but this is the line that I've established, that God's established for my life. I'm not crossing it, and you're not crossing it. So let's get that straight in the beginning. And if you have a problem with that, that's your problem, it's not mine. Don't try to come convincing me to, to cross the line. And that's how you got to roll, amen? amen? In this scripture, Jesus isn't being sexist. Uh, young men are held to the same responsibility, so don't think of it as a gender thing. This part of the scripture seems to be aimed at our young ladies. But God isn't sexist, he's just all-knowing. He knows that the consequences of sex normally tend to impact the lives of young ladies more often. It's easy for a guy to say, oh, you're pregnant? That's your bad thing. 
Because I was planning on breaking up with you anyway, so you can do whatever you want to do with the baby. Mm -hmm. My bad. You know, I'll be there for you. I'll drop some pampers off lady, but I got to go holler at this other girl that looks better than you, that's willing to do more with uh, with me than you are, and who is just, she just looked back. She's crying. <laughs> and you will feel crushed. Y'all saw 16 and pregnant and teen moms. Y'all feel me? It's real. And the last thing, number four. This is the most important part in that scripture, in Songs of Solomon. It says, until it pleases. That's the last part of the scripture. The word until speaks of a space and time. God is, when that word says, uh, don't stir it up until it pleases, until means there's a defined moment when God is like, the, the light is green. Go ahead, man. Go ahead, girl. Stir that thing up. Arouse it. Open the can for all I care. <laughs> God is like, man, what you like? Open that can, man. It's the time. It's the open the can, man. Come on, man. God's like, do it, do it, do it, do it. God is like, he's ready. He's ready, man. And white people are like, yeah, keep preaching. I see the God. I see the God. You know what I mean? That's crazy, man. But anyway, the word until speaks of a space and time, and God's word explicitly is explicitly telling us that there is a right and beautiful and perfect time to stir up and awaken love, loving sexual desires. And it's defined with one word, marriage. Amen. 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 I'm not even gonna lie to y'all. Some of y'all have known me for several years. I, I try my best to keep it 100% real with young people. Because if it's fake, I'm like, man, get that out of here. He's lying. I don't believe that. Check it out. My wife and I, we know about stirring up some stuff. I ain't gonna lie to y'all. Some of y'all said, huh? <laughs> <laughs> and we stirred it up, we awakened it, and you know what? God blessed us. We have a little boy on the way named Caleb Rashad Jones. God went on October 29th of this year, our first child. And you know what? When my wife found out that she was pregnant, she just said, oh my God, what are my parents going to think? Is my dad going to leave me? Where are we going to live at? What do I do? Where am I going to get clothes from? She wasn't stressing. She wasn't tripping. She was excited. If you, know, if you think I'm lying with what I'm about to say, ask her. When we first found out she was pregnant, I don't know how. I've never done it before, but I did a backflip. <laughs> I, I, I just was I was like, ah, I did a backflip. I'm like, what did I do? And I looked at her, I was like, what did I just do? It's crazy. But there is a right time. And when you're married, and you got that wedding ring on your finger, and, it's, and you just exchange those vows with a man or woman who's proven their love for you, not somebody who's just like, girl, you looking finer than a mug today. Mmm, skinny jeans look good on you. Plus, you got the light pink ones. Ooh. You look in the vibes, girl. Ooh, you look at your Hey, come here, little mama. You looking sexy. You so much. Girl, are you fine in them up? Mm. I know your mama didn't be yelling at you all the time. Just come roll with me. I got my own car. Where you been wanting to go lately? Why you still got them old shoes on? Let's go get you a new pair of shoes. What you need your hair done? You need some nails? Oh, you ain't got no school clothes yet? I'm gonna take you to get a couple outfits. Come on. She feeling like a queen. She's oh man, this man about to drop $20 on me. <laughs> Sometimes. That's all it takes sometimes to get in a situation where all the wrong things are perfectly aligned and you make a decision and the impact and the consequences of that decision, it never stops. It just keeps going. God will forgive you, but, but don't ever forget this right here. God will forgive you, but consequences are real. Amen. God will forgive you, but consequences are real. Last scripture, Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verses number 1 and 8. This is a powerful scripture. This scripture puts everything into perspective. And this is what it says. There is a time for everything, a season for every activity. Yes, you can put sexual in front of that word. There's a time, for, there's a perfect time for sexual activity where it's perfect, it's beautiful under heaven. A time to love and a time to hate, a time for war and a time for peace. The word pleases in this scripture also refers to a space and time where God can look upon our actions 
of sexual activity and be pleased in what he sees. When a married couple is in agreement and shares the love of sexual activity, God is pleased. I also believe that God is pleased in the sight of this purity ceremony today. Amen. All of you that made the decision to take this vow of saving sex for marriage are willingly, consciously, willingly and consciously acknowledging what God's word says about sex. And you can ask any person who's been walking with God for any willing of time, and excuse me, for any length of time we've seen his blessings, obedience is rewarded by blessing. Amen. Obedience is rewarded with a life of peace. Amen. Obedience sometimes is, re is rewarded with, with a life that has some challenges and difficulties, but it's not the kind that will crush you and kill you. It's the kind that will make you stronger. Amen. So please hold on to these words. Can I pray real quick? Is it okay if I pray to, to, to push this word even further? Lord, real quick, I pray for every young person in this room. There is power in purity. It's not a joke. It's not I'm corny and I can't, I can't get none. So I'm going to just come to this purity ceremony because no boys like me or no girls like me. There's beautiful princess, princes and princesses in this room right now. And I thank you that they will see themselves with that, that royalty that you see us with, Father. Protect every single one of them from wolves in sheep's clothing. Protect every single one of them from men and women that have smooth words yes. and beautiful lips and beautiful bodies that have nothing but the wrong intentions for them, Lord. Yes, Lord. I pray that you would give them strength and grace and in times where they feel weak. I thank you that you would give them the power that they're going to need to walk this decision out, Father. Yes. Holy Spirit, be with them with every step they take and every breath they take yes. until they fulfill this vow. Let this be something that they dream about, yes. that becomes more than just today. Let this not be something that they forget about or it just fades into the blackness of, of, of the past and history a month from now. Let this be something that stays on the forefront of their heart because it honors you. Yes. In the mighty name of Jesus, everybody say Amen. 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 Amen.